Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are going to uh, talk about thrombosis and antithrombotic drugs. Okay, so we've mentioned one antithrombotic drug at the moment, but I'm going to leave most of the antithrombotic drugs till the end and we'll discuss them all at once. Uh, but clopidogrel uh, fits so nicely into the pathway that I've just labelled it on there as we go through. Uh, right, so clopidogrel is a competitive antagonist for the ATP receptor and stops the chain reaction of the activation of platelets. So the number of platelets you end up getting activated uh, at the site of the hole uh, is feeble, basically. It's only the ones that actually initially see collagen and tissue factor. Okay, so you don't get this massive rise in thromboxane A2. And since we've seen that thromboxane A2 is responsible for vasoconstriction, um, then uh, that's one effect that it certainly is not going to happen if you've got clopidogrel. And you might ask, well, why on earth would you want to use this drug? It's going to stop um, the hemostatic response, and yes, it is, but we give it to people who are at risk of thrombosis, which is basically, we'll discuss this more later, thrombosis is when you activate the hemostatic pathway even though there's no hole in the side of the blood vessel. So you get all of this happening in a blood vessel that's perfectly intact, basically, and that can uh, lead to problems. I mean, vasoconstriction, you don't want that to be happening somewhere where there's no problem because you're just going to stop blood from getting to uh, whichever place that blood vessel supplies blood to. Okay, now from boxing A2, if we continue on with this pathway, has uh, another role in hemostasis. So this first characteristic uh, thing which happens in hemostasis is vasoconstriction. The second major thing which happens is platelet aggregation. Okay, so we'll now talk about platelet aggregation. Okay, and again, it's from boxane A2, which is going to activate platelet aggregation. Okay, so, basically, we've discussed that because of platelet activation, from boxane A2 has gone up hugely in the vicinity of this hole in the side of the blood vessel. Okay, now the platelets themselves actually have a receptor for from boxane A2. So the platelets produce the from boxane A2, but they also have a receptor for it. So it's a G-protein coupled receptor, or a 7-transmembrane receptor. So this is the thromboxane A2, or TXA2, receptor. Okay, and when thromboxane A2 is going to, it binds to uh, the thromboxane A2 receptor, what happens is that a downstream pathway is triggered within the cell, which leads to the activation of another protein on the surface of the platelets. Okay, so this protein is extremely important in platelet aggregation. Okay, so this is the protein known as glycoprotein 2B slash 3A. Glycoprotein 2B, and again it's Roman numerals all the way, 2B 3A, forward slash 3A. Okay, so this is often abbreviated to GP 2B slash 3A. Right, okay, so when the thromboxane A2 binds to the thromboxane A2 receptor on the platelets, it's going to lead to a downstream signaling pathway which activates the uh, GP2B slash 3A protein. And now, once this GP2B slash 3A protein has been activated, it can bind to a lobe of another protein which is within the blood known as fibrinogen. So let me just discuss fibrinogen. Okay, so this is something we're going to see a huge amount of later when we discuss coagulation. Okay, but for now, fibrinogen has another role. So fibrinogen is this protein which has two lobes with a connection between the two lobes. Okay, so this is fibrinogen. Now, it's a normal component of the blood. So everyone has fibrinogen within their blood, and it's produced by the liver. Now... Just like tissue factor, it uh, had an old name, which was factor 3. Fibrinogen is also one of the coagulation factors. And its old name is 
da 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 Factor one. So it's the most important one. It's the it's the first coagulation factor. So when we look at coagulation later and you're wondering where is factor one? Why is there no factor one? Well it's because factor one is so important that it's been renamed fibrinogen. Okay, so fibrinogen is very, very important in the coagulation cascade. However, it's also got a totally separate function where it's involved in platelet aggregation. Okay, so fibrinogen is normally um, inert, basically. It does nothing within the blood. However, once the platelets have been... Um, well, once thromboxane A2 has bound to the thromboxane A2 receptor and it has activated the glycoprotein 2B slash 3A, and I'm having to be very careful here because this is not, this process of thromboxane A2 activating the glycoprotein 2B slash 3A, this is not platelet activation. Platelet activation, remember, is the name for uh, the plate that's starting to produce ADP and thromboxane A2. But it, there's a terrible temptation to call this platelet activation because this is what's going to make the platelet sticky. Okay, so this is the reaction which makes the platelet sticky. So once you have activated the GP2B slash 3A, and that's my solution to this, I'll say activated the GP2B slash 3A rather than activated the platelet. Okay, so once you've activated the GP2B slash 3A, what can happen is this GP2B slash 3A can bind to one of the lobes of fibrinogen. Okay, so let me just show you what's going to happen here. I'll draw a picture and show you what this means. So basically, here is our platelet with its activated GP2B slash 3A protein. Now what can happen is it can form a complex with a lobe of fibrinogen, like so, okay, and now if we have another platelet over here, which has also had its GP2B slash 3A protein activated by thromboxane A2, then it combines the other lobe of this fibrinogen, okay, so we're starting to get platelets sticking together. Now, think about this, do you think each platelet is just going to have a single GP2B slash 3A protein on? Well, of course not. They're going to have loads of the things. So if we draw more of these, so here are more GP2B slash uh, 3A proteins, they're all going to be activated as well because these both of these platelets have had thromboxane A2 bind to the thromboxane A2 receptor and therefore activate the GP2B slash 3A receptors. Okay, so they can bind to lobes of fibrinogen as well. And then you can bring in more platelets here, which have also had thromboxane A2 um, activate the GP2B slash 3A proteins. And you can continue this great lattice on, basically. The upshot of this story is that the platelets are going to start sticking together via this interaction between GP2B slash 3A and the fibrinogen. Okay, so here is the final platelet that, that I'm going to bother drawing. But the point is that what you're going to get is platelets starting to stick together once the thromboxane A2 has uh, bound to the thromboxane A2 receptor and activated the GP2B slash 3A protein. Okay, so this is what's known as platelet aggregation. So thromboxane A2 makes the platelet sticky and activates platelet aggregation, but this is not platelet activation. When you activate the platelets to make them sticky, that is not the same as platelet activation. Okay, so platelet activation is when the platelets are activated to produce ADP and from voxane A2. Okay, right, so now let's put this all into perspective. Okay, so if we draw a little picture down here, so here is the hole in the side of our blood vessel again. Okay, here is our disturbed endothelial cell here. Okay, here is our uh, basement membrane underneath that. So this is the basement membrane here. Okay, here is the subendothelial connective tissue underneath. Like so. And underneath that, you've got the internal elastic lamina. Okay, in blue. Now, we've already discussed platelet adhesion. Okay, so some platelets will initially stick to the edge 
of these damaged endothelial cells. So here we have these platelets which bound to the von Willebrand factor which was exposed on the disturbed endothelial cells, okay? And it was, remember, the GP1B95 protein on the surface of the platelets which bounds to the von Willebrand factor on these disturbed endothelial cells, okay? Then what you're going to have is the whole activation cascade happening. So you'll get some platelets coming up and meeting the connective tissue, the collagen, and also the tissue factor, and then they will lead to a cascade which will lead to thromboxane A2 going up in the vicinity here. So you're going to get absolutely loads of thromboxane A2 being produced. So this is the result of the activation chain reaction, basically. This is the importance of it. Okay, we've discussed that the thromboxane A2 is going to cause vasoconstriction of the blood vessel locally, but it's also going to act on all the platelets in the vicinity and make them sticky. So all of these platelets which have already adhered to the disturbed endothelial cell, they will become sticky for other platelets, and all of the platelets which haven't yet adhered to anything, they'll become sticky. So you'll start to get platelets binding to each other, the so-called platelet aggregation process, and basically what you're going to form is a massive great mass of platelets. And to make this utterly transparent, I'm going to draw it like this. Okay, so you'll get a mass of platelets which will start to fill in this hole, basically. And when you've got this mass of platelets which, it's, which is held together just by these interactions between uh, GP2B slash 3A and fibrinogen, this is what's known as a primary platelet plug. So we are plugging in the wall of um, the blood vessel with what's known as a primary platelet plug. Okay, or uh, if you're being more correct, um, this is called a primary hemostatic plug. Okay, so primary platelet plug, but the more correct name for this is a primary hemostatic plug. Okay, so that is the second portion of the hemostasis response. So the first um, res portion of the hemostasis response was to get um, vasoconstriction, to reduce the amount of blood that's even getting to the um, hole in the side of the blood vessel in the first place. The second portion of the hemostatic response is to form a primary hemostatic plug. Now, there is a third portion of the uh, hemostatic response, and I need to give the motivation for why we need this third portion. Because you might think, well, we've done it. We've plugged the hole in the wall. What, what do we need to do now? Except for actually healing the wall, but that's not part of the hemostatic response. That's part of the regenerative response. Okay. Um, well, basically, this primary plate that plug we formed here is not terribly strong. I mean, platelets, they're a gooey mush, basically. And all you've done is stuck loads of gooey, mushy things together. So you're not going to create something that's very solid. And if you reopen this blood vessel and have uh, a blood flowing through here again, there's a risk that it's going to tear this, um, or push this platelet plug out the way, basically, and destroy it, and then open up the wound again. Okay? So we need to strengthen this primary platelet plug, basically. And the way that you strengthen it is that you give it a meshwork that surrounds each and every platelet. So it's kind of like when you're building a building, you have the concrete uh, meshwork surrounding all the other bits of the building. Uh, so the infrastructure which holds the whole thing together and everything else is extra. So all the extra bits are like the platelets. And we've kind of at the moment forgot the infrastructure, so we need to now produce the infrastructure. And although we're studying this in the order that you produce the platelet aggregate and then produce the infrastructure, in reality they'll be happening concurrently. So you'll be producing the infrastructure which holds all of these platelets together at the same time that you're actually getting the platelets to aggregate. So what is this infrastructure which holds the platelets together? Well, basically, you start producing a protein known as fibrin, which assembles into fibrin strands. So you produce great big strands, okay, of protein, which intertwine amongst all of the platelets and form a huge great meshwork, basically. A really, really dense meshwork. 
So imagine spider's web wrapped around each and every platelet and holding each and every platelet firmly in position. This is what we're going to produce, a meshwork of fibrin strands. So let me write this down. Fibrin strands. Um, from fibrin proteins and this meshwork of fibrin strands is what is going to hold the platelets firmly together to make a solid structure and when you add the fibrin uh, meshwork into this uh, primary hemostatic plug what you then get is what's known as a secondary hemostatic, hemostatic plug okay so secondary hemostatic plug so the next portion uh, that we need to look at of this hemostatic response is how do you create these fibrin strands? How do you create the protein that's going to make this mesh work for the um, primary platelet plug and turn it into a secondary hemostatic plug? And that process of turning um, a inner component of the blood, namely fibrinogen or factor one, into fibrin and then assembling that into fibrin strands that is the process known as coagulation, and it's the third process of hemostasis. So the first process is that you get uh, vasoconstriction to limit the blood that's actually getting to this hole in the side of the blood vessel. The second portion is that you get platelet aggregation to form the primary platelet plug. And the third step is that you start uh, converting fibrinogen into fibrin, which you then assemble into fibrin strands. And this fibrin, these fibrin strands form a very dense meshwork around the platelets within the primary platelet plug. And this makes a stronger secondary hemostatic plug, which will actually plug the hole in the uh, side of the blood vessel. And we'll look at the coagulation process more in the next video.